Springboks in Argentina, folks. 24 points to 13. Springboks get it done in what was... A little bit of a scrappy game at times, but um, certainly had some free-flowing moments. We'll go through some of the key events, stats, and you guys can let us know your thoughts. Um, a bit of a different game from Argentina. Firstly, different for me, anyway. On my feed, there was no commentary for the first 45 minutes, which was, I don't know, sometimes that's actually kind of refreshing not to have the yapping. But sometimes I like commentary. It just depends on who you've got and how the game is going. Um, you know, I like the ones who can add a bit of... Especially the ones who are at the ground who can then like see like, oh, these guys are lining up for this kind of move. They're going to shift it this way. I love those kind of insights. But um, some a lot of the times these days, commentators are just watching on TV like you and me, so they can't see anything extra. But um, yeah, no commentary for the first 45 minutes. I said technical difficulties. And also both the teams in alternate kits, which were both a bit different. I think I prefer the Pumas one to the, uh, the Bok one. But yeah, very, very different kits. Um, Chocobatos went off early for Argentina, which was a real shame because he's only just gotten back into international rugby. Hopefully he's all right as we head into this Rugby World Cup campaign. But it was South Africa who were relentless early. They didn't get any points on the board early. 15 phases, Moody with a line break. Jeez, he was on fire. You guys have got some wingers in South Africa. And uh, eventually they get held up, opt for a penalty because they go back for advantage. But Marty Lubbock didn't take his kicking boots to Argentina, at least not early on. They must have shipped them over DHL Express late in the game when he did actually start kicking some points. But he missed the first shot. But it was pleasing to see South Africa trying to run so much ball. A lot of times, guys in open space just aggressively running the ball, which was pleasing. Whereas the Argentinian guys very rarely managed to do the same. Um, it's, a, it's a concerning issue for Argentina now, week on week on week. They get a lot of carries, but don't get that much go forward. But anyway, um, South Africa opted for the three on 15 minutes and got it this time. Uh, Borgato had done well to tackle Moody into touch, which was one of the kind of close ones in the corner. But um, yeah, it was another large period of pressure, which the South Africans were able to bank three points from. Um, but they did start conceding a couple of penalties to the box guys. Argentina mauled it, had a tap and go, a tap and go again. And on like their third attempt... When Bertrano did a very quick thinking tap and go, he managed to get past Dion Fauri for the first try of the game to make it seven points to three. That is the only try of the game for Argentina. And is it a little bit concerning? Like it's a tap and go when the box guys were a little bit caught napping. So there wasn't any Argentina tries that were like well worked moves or relentless pressure or a great maul, you know, a great counter attacking play kick return kind of thing nah was it just a tap and go which is all good in its own its own right but <clears throat> yeah you'd like to be able to score more tries than that if you're at home would you argentina um anyway south africa they win a penalty at the breakdown in 26 minutes i think it might have been free free actually to kind of make up for that missed tackle then a great touch finder from marty libach like he was missing with the poles but that touch finder was was noteworthy they mauled it they got held up on 29 minutes, they went for another penalty uh, for the Poles, and they went wide. So South Africa has left a lot of points out there in that first half, like potential points. They've been held up a couple of times. They've missed a couple of penalties. There's handbags. The South Africans are awarded a penalty, but then Marvin Ories shoves, I think, Bofelli on the ground. So the penalty's reversed for kind of instigating more of an incident than it needed to be. And... Um, Eventually, South Africa get yellow card. Mostert gets yellow carded for a tackle off the ball. I think Dion Fried did one at the same time. But uh, Mostert's the one who cops the yellow. Argentina opt for a three. So it's 10 points to three. They've had a try and a penalty, Argentina, despite the fact that they haven't had that many genuine attacking opportunities. Um, they did have one towards the end of the first half, but when they kicked for some space... It was just a bit too deep, and South Africa was able to deal with it pretty well. So 10 points to three at half time. Run meters are 58 to Argentina to 292 from South Africa. That is lopsided. That's what I'm talking about. Argentina not being able to get kind of free-flowing rugby. I mean, that's 36 carries for 58 meters. That is low run meters per carry. South Africa are 69 and 292, so a bit healthier. South Africa have had more ball, 59% position, 58% territory, and like... Argentina's made 94 tackles to 43. And from a South African point of view, seven turnovers conceded to three is a little bit reminiscent of uh, that game against the All Blacks where they just kept dropping the ball. So not quite as bad. 
But yeah, for the box, I feel like they left a lot of points out there in the first half, as I said. Um, Argentina are doing well on defense, but can they keep it up in the second half? Well, second half, Springboks come out firing. Bang, bang, two quick tries. Um, it's Argentina's turn to start conceding a few penalties. The refs play an advantage. I think Creel's come on. He gets the ball to Willemsa. Willemsa gets to the Mapimpi. And um, yeah, it's the first try of the game for the Springboks, which seemed kind of effortless after all the struggles of the first half to break down the Argentinian defense. Good choice to kind of go back blindside when I think the defense was shifting right. So 10 points apiece, great conversion. Livok can kick bloody kicks from the conversions like sidelines, but just give him a regular old penalty and sometimes he shoves it wide. But anyway, some kickers are just like that. 45 minutes, again, it's slick, man. Mapimpi this time, he wins a penalty at the breakdown. They maul it to South Africa, they get advantage. And then Libok with the cross kick to Moody. He misses the conversion this one, but 15 points to 10 South Africa now in front. And then the rest of the game, to be honest, is a bit of a penalty fest. I mean, South Africa get pinged at the breakdown for not rolling. I uh, mean, Fari had rushed to the ball, but the tacklers didn't roll away. So they get pinged, Argentina up for the three. So 13-15, it's a two-point ball game. Nothing much in it, but then Argentina get pinged at the breakdown. Libok pushes one wide, so it's still the same scoreline. Moody's on fire. Like, he makes a great defensive read. Like, it's not just about his attacking play. He shoots out of the line, slams into one of the Argentinian guys. They win a penalty, and then Livok gets this one. So 18-13, then Argentina kick it dead. That territory leads to another South African penalty. 21-13, Livok keeps the scoreboard ticking over on 71 minutes with another one. So it's 24-13. It's just like bang, bang, bang. The game has really just been taken away from the Argentinians now that Livok is kicking those points. The pressure goes on. Um... I mean, Argentina at one point are having to do a dropout because their defense, I mean, it's holding on for grim death. But they're not conceding any more tries. They did almost concede one more, but it was kind of chalked off for obstruction. So, yeah, the penalty count gets pretty high in the second half. I think it's probably, of all the games this weekend, got the highest overall penalty count. But, um, yeah, in the end, the game, the game just kind of peters out. I mean, Kruby comes on for his 100th cap, which is fantastic. Congratulations to him. But... Yeah, apart from that kind of bang-bang start of the second half flurry from the box and the quick thinking from Bertrano, there weren't um, that many kind of genuine try scoring opportunities. Like I mentioned, uh, Moody went close and there was an obstruction one, but yeah, it was the boot doing more of the talking. Run meters finish 560 to the box to 133 to the Pumas. To put that into context, Damian Willemser at fullback for the Springboks at 131 meters. He's got two meters less than the entire Argentinian team in that game. That is troubling from Argentina. 1.6 meters per carry <clears throat> is low. Like four is considered healthy. Springboks are at 4.4. So genuinely quite good. 1.6 is poor. And it's like not, not dissimilar from what we've seen from them in their other games this rugby championship. I mean, they still beat 20 defenders to the box 27. So it's not, it's not that bad, but they're not able to get that much go for it, eh? Um, they make 163 tackles to the box, 87, and their tackling rate is higher than the box, 86% to the box, 81. But um, yeah, it's just the attack, which still looks a touch on the blunt side. I mean, you've got to give credit to the, the box defense as well, but still. Um, penalties conceded as 14-13. So like I mentioned, a little bit high from both sides. Santiago Carreras... Has the most run meters of any Argentinian with 24. One clean break, three defenders beaten, but also three penalties conceded. He at least gives away one when the, the box just flood him at the breakdown for not releasing after he's taken a high catch. Uh, Matera makes 21 out of 24 tackles. Like the Argentinian guys were tackling like demons at times. Um, Moody makes 105 meters. Three clean breaks, four defenders beaten. I mentioned Willemson with his 131 plus two clean breaks and seven defenders beaten. Um, and you can't make seven from seven tackles while he's on. Klein makes nine from nine. Um, yeah, it's not going to go down as a classic. It's certainly another another game in each team's build up to the Rugby World Cup. But yeah, we will see how these two teams go in the remaining matches. I think the Argentinians have only got one to go. I think it's against Spain before the World Cup starts. And the box have got I think Wales, right? Wales and then New Zealand prior to the kickoff of the World Cup itself. So, yeah, there you go, folks. Let us know your thoughts. 24-13. I've still got one game to watch. Going to go back and catch up on Fiji and Japan, which I've seen the first half of. 
but not the rest. But anyway, you guys let us know your thoughts on this one, and um, yeah, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.